Here's what people are talking about, you guys. President Trump gave his big speech at the U.N. General Assembly today, and at one point he threatened to totally destroy North Korea. Yeah, yeah he said he has a... Uh, so he's a good plan to do it, too. He's going to run for president of North Korea. So that's what he did. He's already got the hat made. During the speech, Trump threatened to, quote, totally destroy North Korea. <laughs> Which I know, well, I think it can only mean one thing. Guys, it means he's going to run for president of North Korea. <laughs> Trump also said during his address that if North Korea continues working on its nuclear program, the U.S. will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Oh, my God. Trump is going to run for president of North Korea. <laughs> it's been beautiful. Have a good time, everybody. I'm going to be doing a little help over here. Have a good time, everybody. You know, it reminds me of newscaster Herbert Morrison and his commentary during the Hindenburg disaster. Just look at those beautiful flames arching skyward from that airship. Oh, the humanity! The humanity! is having the time of their lives. Have a good time, everybody. Have a good time, everybody. I'm going to be doing a little help over here. Have a good time, everybody? Have a good time? That's the second worst disaster response of all time. It's bursting into flames. People are jumping. Oh, the humanity. Have a great time, everybody. Woo! CNN released the letter that Obama left for Trump on his inauguration day. Apparently, the letter includes specific pieces of advice urging Trump to guard democratic institutions and traditions. Really? Isn't it super obvious that that's what the president is supposed to do? That's like leaving a note for the babysitter that says, Zoe's bottle's in the fridge. By the way, Zoe is a human toddler. Human toddlers require food and water or they die. <laughs> Like, that's not the note that you leave for your successor, right? You leave that note for a first-time babysitter. It's like, uh, dinner's in the oven, uh, bedtime's at seven, but not for you. Oh, and, uh, P.S., the baby's the one without the fur. All right, thank you very much. Steve Bennett was on 60 Minutes. He was on 60 Minutes, and he said that, uh, Trump firing James Comey was the biggest mistake in modern political history. <laughs> Except maybe electing the host of The Apprentice President of the United States. <laughs> During the interview, Bannon said that he thought Donald Trump's firing of former FBI director James Comey was the biggest mistake in modern political history. But that's not true. Everybody knows electing Donald Trump was the biggest mistake in modern <laughs> political history. The biggest innovation for the iPhone 10 is it can recognize faces, which that's going to be a problem here in Los Angeles. We change our faces every three weeks or so. The face recognizing camera called Face ID, which is a, a great feature unless you live in Hollywood and you have to buy a new phone every time you buy a new face. <laughs> Last night, a Republican named Luther Strange lost the Alabama Senate primary. Yep, so now Luther Strange will go back to his old job, a villain in a Batman comic. You know, between family with Luther Strange, who, by the way, is now br back to work trying to kill Superman. We're going to help you out. Thank you. Have a good time. <laughs> have a good time. It's a hurricane, not a pool party. You don't have a... Have a good time? It's a flood area, not a water park. Have a good time. They're hurricane victims, and you sound like you're hosting a barbecue. A group of Turkish archaeologists claim they've uncovered the final resting place of St. Nicholas, old St. Nick. And what you're seeing right there is Santa's grave. <laughs> I told you I looked. Now you're... How do you explain that to kids, by the way? I have some good news about Santa and some bad news. <laughs> good news is he was real. Uh... <laughs> Santa is real and Santa is dead. You know, now when my son asks me if Santa is real, I can confidently say, yes! <laughs> he is dead, though. <laughs> I guess watching this, the good news is there is no way that man remembers the nuclear codes. <laughs> At the signing, he forgot to do the signing. But on the plus side, let's hope he forgets the launch codes. <laughs> we are just three days away from Super Bowl 52. That is right. This is... 
Which means that we're just three days away from finding out whether Boston will be burned down by an angry mob or a happy mob. We don't know which... The Super Bowl Sunday is this Sunday. Between New England Patriots and the Philadelphia Eagles, the game will determine whether Philadelphia is burned to the ground by happy fans or sad fans. <laughs> President Trump this morning denied there is chaos in the White House, tweeting, quote, there is no chaos, only great energy. Well, if this president thing doesn't work out, he can always get a job writing fortune cookies. There is no chaos, only great energy. I gotta say, man, if this whole president thing doesn't work out, Trump would be dope at writing fortune cookies, huh? <laughs> Spotify announced today it's removing R. Kelly's music from all of its curated playlists as part of an updated policy toward objectionable content and conduct by artists, which is rough for him because he's totally into streaming. Spotify, Pandora, and Apple Music all announcing they would no longer promote Kelly's songs, removing them from their playlists, though fans can still search for them. Yeah, that is the ultimate punishment for R. Kelly. No more streaming. Also... <laughs> Guys, I saw that Starbucks just announced that now anyone can use its restrooms, even if they haven't bought anything. <laughs> then everyone was like, cool, so we'll just continue doing what we're doing. All right. Starbucks has announced that its bathrooms will now be open to anyone who walks in regardless of whether they buy anything. <laughs> no, what, no, hang on. What the... <laughs> so they're saying this whole time Starbucks hasn't been a public bathroom? <laughs> I think that there is more Steven Seagal could have said on this issue, and I intend to do it right now. <laughs> These football players have the fans under siege. Because if there's one thing Steven Seagal knows, it's that America is under siege from a full-on attack force. They may think they're above the law. By NFL players who are out for justice. But they may soon find themselves on deadly ground. With a fire down below. They'll find most Americans are out for justice. Hopefully they'll face an executive decision made by a patriot. Because they're feeling under Siege 2, the sequel. Because right now our flag is Under Siege 2. And if these protesters don't like this country, they can feel free to challenge me to Mortal Kombat. Was I in that? March for death and on deadly ground. But these NFL players aren't above the law. They're Roseanne, episode 207.